right, guys. So what I have here is my 2016 um, Specialized S-Works Turbo Levo. Uh, what I want to do is modify uh, this to include the new hand controls that you see on the 2018 models. Um, there's a picture of that new hand control here. The new hand control essentially uh, gives you the ability to select up and down between the power modes up on the handlebar instead of down on the battery pack on the trail. Um, it also has a pretty cool button that has an instant turbo mode. So if you're in uh, eco mode, which I ride in most of the time, and you come across a, a big hill you want to shoot up, um, just one button push uh, puts it right to turbo mode. And if you've ever been on, on eco mode on these bikes and you hit a big section you want to hit turbo, it is a, a bit inconvenient to, to reach down and have to fiddle with the controls on the battery. So it's nice keeping your hands on the bars, hitting the switch, and off you go. So I wanted to retrofit uh, the switch on my 2016. Did some research online, uh, talked to specialized at the bike shop, found out it was possible uh, on 2016 and 2017 models. They weren't sure it was at first until they consulted specialized. Um, but it's pretty straightforward, so here's what you do. So really all you need to do is have uh, three things. Three millimeter Allen, eight millimeter, and then uh, the cable itself. So here's the new switch, which has a uh, up and down for the power modes. Um, sorry, this backwards. So plus and minus your power modes on the bar. Uh, this button here at the bottom, you hold that, and it kind of walks the bike under power at walking speed, which is a nice feature. Uh, and up here on top, of course, is the specialized button, and that is what you hit for instant turbo mode, uh, regardless of the mode that you're currently in. Uh, this switch is about 80, 85 bucks at the dealer. Has to be ordered through Specialized, um, so your local dealer should be able to get you that part. Once you have the part, uh, we'll start basically with uh, this assembly here. So take the eight millimeter, pretty straightforward. Uh, first you gotta pull the crank off here. So we're gonna use the eight millimeter on the crank. And as soon as I get this off, I will uh, come right back and show what I got next. Cranks off, you've got three holes in the motor cover to take off, or three bolts. You got one here, you got one here, and you got one up in here. So take those three out with the uh, three millimeter. And uh, here's what it looks like after you do that. Uh, one thing worth noting, the two bolts that went in these two are longer than this one on the left. So um, I'm just going to keep it in the cover for the sake of uh, not forgetting. But you'll see it is important that you make sure not to forget which one goes where. And now we have this uh, once the cover's off. Um, the plug for the new remote is going to plug in right here. And you'll see there's a little blank insert that you just basically pull out. And you can see the pin connection, which is exposed now, ready for the new switch. Uh, and it's really that simple. And the new switch has the same configuration that you see here. Um, now, this won't work by itself when you just plug the new switch in. Um, the new bikes have new firmware, which will accept you know, the programming changes from the switch. So take the bike in once you get the switch to your dealership. Uh, Specialized has to hook into the bike uh, through the motor and the battery controls here at the same time and do a 2018 firmware upgrade. This has to be done at the dealership. It cannot be done yourself. Um, you cannot even buy um, the hardware needed to do it. Um, they did it for me free of charge. Took about, I'd say five minutes. It was pretty fast. And uh, once that was done, I'll show you what happens here. We plug the switch in. All right, so I plug the switch in. Um, be mindful of the direction. It kind of fits both ways, so be real careful. Um, if you look at the plug here, if I can show this tip, one side has three pins, one has one pin. The side with three pins needs to go towards the front of the bike, like that. So again, that's three pins towards the front of the bike on the new switch when you plug it in. And let's turn it on here. Now on the switch, first I'll try using the uh, plus and minus buttons here. And there you have it, up and down. And if you're in the lowest power mode, like that, and I'll, I'll hit this little switch on top, specialized, and you'll see it jumps to full mode. And then, of course, holding the little foot symbol there jogs the back tire for the walking mode. That's about it, let go. So from there, you have to route the wire. So this is the part that's kind of tricky. And here, I'll show you this. Let me uh, come right back. All right, so underneath the uh, Levo here, there's plenty of space for you to feed this in through here, right into the switch connection. Um, and then from there, there's existing cables, of course, that go through the frame 
with proper mounts. It's going to be easy to secure this with some small zip ties. I'm just going to kind of make this run up with this guy up along the frame inside. The big issue comes when you come to the actual frame itself. There's two options. This cable's got to come out of here somehow. So you can drill a hole in the frame, a small hole here, have it exit like your other cables do, and put a small grommet there, and uh, that's fine. The issue is, I talked to Specialized, you will lose your frame warranty if you do this. Uh, even though it's just a small hole for the cable, they said your warranty would be void on the frame, which is a lifetime warranty. Uh, it's risky. Uh, I'd rather not lose the lifetime warranty on my S-Works Levo. Uh, so I think I'm going to route it uh, for this last little stretch here externally, which isn't the most aesthetically uh, incredible mod you could do. That being said, this small bit of aesthetics versus losing your warranty, uh, I think it's personally for me worth doing that. So what I'll do is I'll get this secured up and I'll show you what I'm going to do for my next steps here uh, to get that routed this way. And I'll be right back. All right, so I've run the cable. Now you can see this guy here. I right, run it up alongside in here. Pretty clean, looks pretty much like factory. And you're gonna see here is where we depart. Uh, tied up here pretty high above these holes. And it's gonna come out here in the corner of the battery. Um, which might sound kind of hokey, but actually all I had to do with a, with a Dremel was just a real small part of this plastic corner. I just clear it a tiny bit. Um, that's not going to affect your, your electronics battery warranty, I would hope not. Um, even if it does, I'd rather have a replacement battery not under warranty than the entire bike frame. So, once you plop that in here, you can see what that's going to do here in one second. Alright, so, once that's in, you can see with that notch up there, this battery actually closes, pretty much closed. Um, and it comes out right there. And that allows you to, to use all the internal routing of the bike up to this point, which I think is pretty important because it keeps it out of, you know, a chance of getting snagged or, or a touch. And then from there, you just have to run it from here to here. Which, my lighting here is kind of funky. Hold on. From here to here. So, we'll uh, resume and I'll come back in a sec. Alright, so now with the battery on and secured, you can see my final install here um, at the top corner there up along, tied into this guy, and then from there it's a pretty smooth and seamless run with the rest of the cables up into its new home, which is the same as uh, the new factory models. So, uh, pretty sweet. I'm gonna be happy to have this on the trail. I think it's, uh, you know, you really can't tell that much was added. Um, if you don't wanna go to the extreme of having to cut the hole in the frame, this is probably uh, the way you might want to do it. Um, the other upside is you don't have to cut this wire, which you would if you, if you drilled a hole here to run this cable, because the end doesn't come off, you have to cut this, uh, run it inside and then solder about four small wires if you uh, go that route. So what I'll probably do is get a piece of like painters, maybe, or maybe some gaffers tape, run that along here. Um, to kind of keep that cable more secure, but for now, it's pretty discreet. You're not going to hardly notice it. Um, but the added function, uh, now that it's done, is going to be pretty sweet. So we'll make sure this is all plugged in, and uh, away we go. All right, thanks.